Hey everybody, today I wanted to finish up the uh, teaching series on the anointing. This is the anointing part three. Uh, before we get started, let's pray. Father, thank you for everyone listening and everyone watching. I pray, God, that you give them revelation, knowledge, and supernatural insight in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So I'm coming to you today from uh, not the sanctuary or my office, but my back porch at home. Because <laughs> I got a lot going on today, and so I thought I would, uh, this afternoon we came home just a little bit early to work from home. But I wanted to finish up the, the series on the anointing, so I've been meditating on it a little bit and praying about what to say. Um, today for the final, absolute final uh, part of this series on the anointing, I wanted to say your anointing can be increased by your prayer life. Uh, I teach a lot of times that Aaron's anointing was passed on to his son primarily through their closeness, through working together. And all of us can increase in anointing uh, by working closely to brothers and sisters in the Lord. The closer we get, the stronger the anointing becomes on our life. But that is not the source of our anointing. In the other two teachings, I talked about how the anointing is the burden-removing, yoke-destroying power of God. It's the, uh, the, the power of God that gets results. If you want to get results at work, you need the anointing. If you want to get results in your church, you need the anointing. The anointing is God's power to get results. It removes burdens and it destroys yokes. It can be increased through working with our sisters and brothers in the Lord, just like it was with Aaron's sons. The closer they worked to their dad, he was anointed with powerful anointing oil, the Old, Old Testament anointing oil from the temple. And uh, it was kind of like, and I've, I've referenced this in both of my former teachings, or both of the former ones, that um, uh, if you've ever hugged anybody that carried a lot of perfume or that had a lot of cologne on, you know that three hours later you still smell like them. It was the same way when they were anointed with oil, their sons carried that smell. They carried the dimension of the anointing on them because they worked closely to him. But our work with our sisters and brothers is not the source of the anointing. The Bible calls Jesus Christ calls him the Messiah. Christ is the Greek word Christos. Messiah is the Hebrew word Meshiach. Both of those words mean the anointed one. So anywhere you see Jesus Christ, just say Jesus the anointed one. Or where you say you see Jesus the Messiah, just say Jesus the anointed one. He is the one that was anointed by the Holy Spirit to get results. He's got the anointing of God on him to produce results. And it is so it is with us. The way we get more of the anointing is our fellowship with Jesus. Our prayer life to the Father in the name of Jesus by the Holy Spirit will produce greater dimensions of the anointing in our lives. The anointing of God is at work. He wants us more anointed right now in this time and in this season as a church, as a network to get things done. I'm telling you, I think it, it is past time for our churches to have full-time pastors all over the world. Uh, uh, most, if not all, of our churches should have full-time pastors. It takes the anointing to get there. Not just the pastor being anointed, but the congregation pressing in and receiving the overflow anointing of the Holy Spirit from Jesus. The anointing is going to produce results for our churches to grow. Just because we're LGBT affirming doesn't mean we should still be around the 25 to 30 mark. Our churches should be breaking through the 200, 250, 500, thousand member mark. Our ministry should be having to pull in folding chairs to, to get into our extra auditoriums for our services. The one thing we lack is the anointing being increased on all of our members from the newest member to the oldest. And the only way we're going to get more anointing in our life is if we pray. Now, some people say, well, it's not about the time you spend in prayer. I, I disagree with that. I would say absolutely it's true that it's not about um, the quality of prayer. God doesn't get angry at us if we spend little time, nor does he love us more if we spend a lot of time. But the degree of our anointing will absolutely rest on the amount of time we spend with God. So if you spend five minutes a day with God, you're going to have five minutes worth of the anointing of the presence of God. If you spend an hour with God, you're going to have an hour of anointing. And, and it's all based solely on setting that alarm clock to hop up just a little bit earlier in the day. 
um, we can get up. We can start praying in the Holy Ghost. If you don't know what to pray for, start praying in the Spirit. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Get your Bible out. These times along with God, these quiet times, intimacy is going to produce greater dimensions of the anointing. And greater dimensions of the anointing will produce results, harvest, increase, blessing, strength, power, purpose, uh, harvest, 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 financial, emotional, spiritual, numerical, harvest, growth in our churches, growth in our lives. We need the anointing of the Holy Ghost and it's going to come through increased prayer time. Today I just I want to issue that challenge. I want to say to everybody listening, everybody watching, if you don't know how to pray or if you've been in a season where your prayer life has been stagnant or stale, it's time to grow in that area. Get Could You Not Tarry One Hour by uh, Larry Lee. What a great book to teach how to spend more time with God. Uh, just sit quietly before the Lord. When your mind wanders, bring it back into subjection and just say, Lord, my mind is focused on you. But if we'll spend more time with God, we will absolutely increase in the anointing. Ah, oh, we need the anointing. <laughs> Look up Acts 10, 38, Isaiah 10, 27, uh, several of these passages. Um, Luke 4, 18 through 20, you'll see that the anointing is a vital component of our life as a church. So God bless you. We love you. We look forward to seeing you. Get to New Covenant Church of Atlanta if you can this Sunday. If you can't, get to a Covenant Network. If you don't know where one's at, uh, go to thecovenantnetwork.com. Look for churches there. If you still don't find one, message me on Facebook or look me up on Twitter, and, and I'll point you in the right direction to get you plugged into a spirit-filled, Holy Ghost, word-preaching a uh, gay affirming church that'll love you and bless you and hug you and, and hold you tight and connect you. And if you can't, um, still can't find one and we can't find you one, then join New Covenant Church of Atlanta online. We have an online campus that we'll be glad to welcome you in and as a member. And if still yet that's not strong enough of, of connection that you need, we'll talk to you about how to plan a church and a Bible study in your city and area. All right, we love you very much. We look forward to talking to you really, really soon. God bless. God bless. God bless. <laughs>